David J. Miller is the executive director of the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at George Mason University School of Business. Dr. Miller's research and teaching focuses on new venture creation and specifically on the role of higher education in the entrepreneurial economy. He's here today to share more about this program. So welcome, Dr. Miller, how Thank are you? Thank you, great to be here. Call me David, please. Okay, David, if you call me Julie. Will do. Okay, good. So people think innovation, entrepreneurship, they tend to think, oh my gosh, Google or Facebook, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. What does it mean? No, and that, that's a great starting point because there is this misconception that it means technology. Mm -hmm. When pretty simply, what do entrepreneurs do? They solve problems. And how do they do it? By applying innovation. And what is innovation? Innovation is a process of using new ideas, methods, and ways of thinking of things. So a new approach to a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, when it's entrepreneurial, it's within the marketplace. So that means whatever innovative approach you're offering, somebody better want to pay for. And that's how you <laughs> know if there's really value there. Okay. So companies like Google and Facebook you mentioned have been incredibly innovative. But again, to your point, it's not always technology. So you could think of a company like Southwest Airlines. Mm -hmm. They had a different hub method. They used only one type of airplane so that all their maintenance people, all their pilots, all their cabin attendants could use any plane that was there. So that was about being efficient in a new way of designing, right? Not necessarily technology. That's interesting. That's kind of like how broadcasting is becoming. Like with radio stations. A lot of radio stations fit one mold and they have it all across the country now. Absolutely. So it's kind of like Absolutely. your interchangeable parts. Plug and, and play and mm -hmm. that, that's one model. Syndication, I guess in a way. Absolutely. Okay. So if we're not tech savvy, if we're not Google, we're not Facebook, why should we care about entrepreneurial economy? That's great, because as I mentioned, entrepreneurs solve problems, okay. and they're change makers, they bring improvements. So there's really kind of four reasons. The first one bring, they change the way we live, work, and play. So Facebook and Google, you mentioned, Facebook's completely changed the way we communicate with one another, with institutions. I'm sure the show has a great Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, Google, how we access information. So they change the way we live, ideally improving it dramatically. Okay. Secondly, they create jobs. New, innovative, growing firms add jobs, and that's something we care about. They also create wealth. And wealth we care about, right, because it's nice to be rich and have money, but more importantly, when people get wealthy, mm -hmm. they do things with that money. Yeah. So, for example, Microsoft, in addition to making Bill Gates really wealthy, there were 10,000 millionaires made. And what do they do? They invested in other companies, which brings more innovation, more jobs. More jobs. But they also participate in philanthropy. All the way back to Andrew Carnegie in America, big entrepreneurs have participated in philanthropy. So you see great universities, research centers, art museums, so that creates even more opportunities. So the entrepreneurial economy is something we need to be aware of because mm -hmm. it changes everything we do every day. The give back process. Absolutely. In a way, yeah. That's a key part of it. So a lot of people say that you know, entrepreneurs are born, not made. Can you be made an entrepreneur? You, you can learn to think entrepreneurial. Yeah. You can learn to act that way. Now a lot of people have an inclination towards that. And remember, because we're doing something new and different, that means you're probably going to fail. So that's just more of a mindset, do you want to do that? You can learn the skills and the techniques, but it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. At Mason, for example, we have courses, we have extracurriculars like laboratories, internship programs, and we even have programs that let you actually start a company. So we can take you through different parts to learn that mindset, but again, it's up to each individual if this is the right thing for them. Is there a statistic, or if you had to guess, how how many times or how often does one fail before one succeeds? So we probably don't have numbers on individuals because not everybody goes back. Right. But venture capital and the people we hear all, all about who back the Googles and the Facebooks and the mm -hmm. Uber, the apps, they are lucky if one out of ten of their investments works. That one wow. makes up for all the other ten. So failure is part of it. And again, the more innovative and different you're going to be, the more likely you are to fail. And how, how do you keep people motivated to so keep they going. So they have to, that's a great question. It's got to be intrinsic. And mm -hmm. that's the thing that people get confused that it's about the money. The money's a byproduct of solving an important problem or bringing a benefit. You think of mm -hmm. Uber the application right. and the benefits that brought. Um, I'll give you a simple example from George Mason. We had some students who came in liberal arts, not business, not engineering. Right. And they want to work on a problem, a new kind of phone case mm -hmm. for exercise. A lot of them have armbands right. and I've had one for years. But the problem with armbands is your phone's Velcroed in, so if someone calls you or you want to check your map, you have to stop your run or your bike or your yoga. They've used magnets so that it comes right off so it doesn't disrupt your run. Oh, wow. 
Wow. So that's and it stays long when you're running. That's a simple innovation. And they're mm -hmm. not making money yet. They've raised a little money. They've done a Kickstarter campaign. They're going to be in local running stores. It's called On You. And you can get it on your store. But this, they're motivated not by money. They left Anderson or Accenture consulting jobs for this. So you have to want to solve that problem. Right. And that's a good problem to solve. This is a great, <laughs> I've been using a prototype for over a year and it's great. great. Better than on you? On you. And on it's you. on you store.com. Got it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Miller. I appreciate you coming in today from Thanks. GMU. All right. Again, for more information about the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at George Mason University School of Business, you can go to business.gmuedu slash education. Stick with us. We'll have more of Let's Talk Live coming up after the break.